guys. Um, this is a actually a video or a comment section video. All right. And the person asked me, would you please share with us how to deal with repressed emotions? All right. So, you know, this is definitely very relevant to a lot of the su subscribers that come here. And it's definitely going to be something that we need to understand when we're increasing our emotional maturity. So this is an excellent um, topic. Thanks for asking that question. And we're going to go ahead and talk about that in this video. All right. So um, repressing emotions is, is very common. Um, it's very common, especially when you've experienced abuse or a trauma okay and then what's usually happening is if we have the emotion and we deem it as negative we'll want to try to run away from it if we deem it as negative all right so we'll want to detach from it we'll want to have some type of avoidance to it and this is where repressing the emotions come in so the types of emotions um, that we're trying to detach from, because that's what we're trying to do. Is it actually happening? No, but we're going to talk about that. And well, let me say this. It's happening. It's happening on a certain, it's on a certain level. Okay. It's happening on a certain level, but um, we can never get rid of it fully because what goes down must comes up. All right. And that's why I made a video like, oof. I want to say over a year ago about um, anxiety attacks and that I was talking about repressed emotions in that video actually as well, but specifically when it comes to having panic attacks and anxiety attacks. And I gave a lot of tips and tools for that. So I want to mention that in a video like this, because if you have these repressed emotions, you may also have experience with panic attacks and anxiety attacks. So um, you might want to check that video out for the tips and tools that I have for um, when you feel that panic attack coming on, what are some of the things that you can do to calm and relax yourself as much as possible um, when you're in that, going through those experiences, all right? So you definitely wanna check that out, all right? And um, even if you haven't had them, it might be good to do that because you don't know if you could actually trigger yourself to have one from bottling up, uh, basically repressing your emotions for so long. And um, in a video, I believe I talked about a beach ball going to the bottom of a pool, you know, pushing it down and how much pressure that is to hold it there and how that if you let that beach ball go at the bottom of the pool it's going to shoot up really high, you know, and that's what's happening when we're having those panic attacks. All right. So uh, definitely check that video out. I'll tag it to the end of this one. But other than that, you guys, um, the type of emotions that we tend to repress are things like anger and fear, grief, um, shame, sadness. And then there's some less common things that we would consider um, that we wouldn't probably typically consider that we're suppressing, I mean, repressing as well. We'll talk about suppression a little further in the video because I don't want to confuse the two but repressing the emotions, um, and that's envy and desire, okay? Envy and desires. You know, we have desires for things. Sometimes we'll repress them um, if we feel like it's not socially acceptable or something that will be negative in our life, or something that we feel shameful over, um, or we feel like we're judging ourselves, okay, over having that. So um, the danger of repressing things, of course, is we're not addressing them. And when we're talking about repression or repressing things, we're talking about on a subconscious level. So we have our conscious level, which is if we had an iceberg, our thoughts and stuff that are above the iceberg. And then we have the subconscious level is all that part underneath the water um, that people aren't seeing and in this instance that we're choosing to not see okay so um when we're repressing things we're running from ourselves ultimately you know that's the biggest issue we're trying to run from ourselves that's a better way of phrasing that we're trying to run from ourselves but can you ever really do that can you ever really truly run from yourself because everywhere that you go, there you will be, 
you know, and that might sound really simple, but yeah, keeping it simple is going to be good anyway, but everywhere you go, you're still going to be with yourself. All right. So it's time for us to start embracing ourselves and um, everything that we're feeling, because as we repress these emotions um, and we're training ourselves to avoid them, it could lead to some additional toxic things like a domino effect, if you will. And um, these things are like addictions. Addictions will occur at this point to substance, to a person, to a thing, to activities. And then we could um, develop compulsive behaviors. Um, we'll develop the neurotic tendencies. That's the emotional distress, like the anxiety and panic attacks, like I said, mental illness, um, depression. All right. And then, you know, we could also develop something called consumerism. And that's like an obsession with shopping and acquiring stuff and things on the external because we don't want to deal with the internal. So that can happen as well. So basically, um, we're seeking um, toxic distractions and stimulations at that point um, in our effort to run from ourselves and avoid. All right. And like I said, this is all centered around our perceptions, our association, our negative feelings towards um, experiencing, you know, the anger, the fear, the grief, the shame, the sadness, for instance. But I've said many times on this channel, especially um, with the with the um, emotion of anger, but all of them, honestly, um, it's nothing wrong with feeling anger, you know, but when you have those negative perceptions that will and then you want to detach from it you know there's nothing wrong with feeling these things is what you do with it you know they're all signals and we're all here in a three dimension right in our human flesh and we're feeling things and it's is to alert us of something that's what it is it's to alert us of something don't make it a negative thing all right so um, other, I just want to mention these other toxic distractions a lot of times can be work. You know, we become a workaholic. Um, you know, I don't want to think about this right now. I'm going to sign up for all the overtime I can do. At least I'll be making money. Meanwhile, you are, you know, thriving and doing strong in that aspect of your life. And then, of course, your emotional and psychological, your psyche, that part of you is in shambles, you know, and then we're off balance. But you got your money, but you're off balance. All right. So working, you know, TV, of course, watching a lot of TV, the Internet, social media, you know, spending crazy amount of times on there in hours and energy and then actually studies show that that makes people even more depressed honestly because they're comparing themselves a lot of times to others and their lack of emotional maturity so it's not really helping is is adding probably more emotions that need to be repressed inside of you at that point if you're not doing it you know from a balanced way um Additional non-obvious ways that we're repressing re repressing our emotions is through like cat stuff stuff like caffeine, and that's you know can go under the addiction part. But I wanted to isolate them because they're non-obvious because people just think about alcohol and drugs, but caffeine, okay, and like those energy drinks and stuff, trying to have to pick me up. Um, you know, these are other things that can happen as well and i'm not a fan of energy drinks you guys really do your research on them they can be very very toxic and unhealthy for you so you know there are other natural uh, ways that we can energize ourselves and stuff like that but i'm not a big fan of energy drinks all right and uh, i guess that was my little sidebar message there so yeah we're trying to run from ourselves and um I want to make another connection here that may not be so obvious um, for someone who hasn't studied this. But when we are um, in that state of repressing our emotions, it actually minimizes the other emotions or the, the emotions that we deem as positive. So your experience of joy and enthusiasm and love and curiosity, those are actually... Um, not you're not able to fully experience them 
while you're repressing those other emotions. We think we are trying to, you know, use these toxic distractions to stimulate a feel of happiness and joy and love and euphoria. I'm like, you know, we're getting high and stuff to try to um, escape those other feelings. But they're actually, we can't, the love isn't, you don't feel as love. You don't feel the joy as strong as if you were actually someone who did your shadow work and allowed yourself to feel what you're feeling and um, work through that without judging your, without being judgmental to yourself. Okay. There's a difference between using your judgment and being judgmental. There are two different things. You know, judgmental is very negative and it's very confining. It's very rigid. It's not allowing you to be. It's not allowing you to flow, have things flow because you can feel things and then they can go, you know, but if you're holding on to it and repressing it, it's not able to go, right? Um, and what you'll find as we're human beings you know, we can experience all types of emotions and feelings as the day goes. You know, like I woke up feeling like crap. Then I took a shower and oh, I started waking up and feeling better. And then I put on my favorite lotions and perfumes. I listened to some po a positive word for the day and oh, well, now I feel happy, you know. So it's very, you know, we go through all types of feelings, but we, when we're true vessels, and we allow the flow to happen, we can feel something and then we can let it go through us and then we can release it, you know? So ultimately by repressing these feelings, um, it, it will make us miserable. It could cause physical disease. Just think of it, dis-ease. You have a dis-ease when you are repressing what you're perceiving as to be these negative emotions and negative feelings, okay? So, yeah, um, I say it all the time, especially for those healing from narcissistic abuse or trying to make any change in our life. When we negatively view something, we're likely to resist it and avoid it versus having acceptance to something. OK, the acceptance, when we accept something that allows us to be more curious about it and work with it. So it's like, hmm, instead of saying, oh, my gosh, I feel bad for being angry. I could be curious, well, why am I feeling angry? Hmm, why am I feeling angry? Let's get to the bottom of that and let's address that and see what I can do to resolve. You know, so it is allowing for resolution at that point, right? So um, I think this is a good time to bring up um, suppression, okay? Because I didn't want you guys to confuse the two. So when we're repressing something, um, we may not even be subconsciously aware that we're doing it because repression is occurring in the subconscious level of our being. And that's a lot more deeply embedded than suppressing something. Okay. So, um, you may not be aware that you are actually pushing those feelings down. Your self-awareness may not, you may not be as connected with yourself to be able to know that you're doing it. But suppression is consciously denying it or, um, a conscious denial or a conscious, a constant, a conscious, yeah, choice to say, you know what, um, for instance, the narcissist calls you while you're at work and says a bunch of horrible things to you and you start feeling these emotions stir up inside of you and it makes you really angry. It makes you feel hurt and it makes you want to cry. And But you're surrounded by your coworkers and you want to try to remain as professional as you want and as private as you can. So perhaps you will suppress those feelings of angers and sadness and feeling hurt basically because you don't want it to grow because you know the tears will start, will start coming. So you tell, you suppress those feelings for the moment. It's kind of putting it like on a pause to say, okay, uh, I don't want to venture into that. This I don't want this to be the time and the place. I don't want to be running to the bathroom. I don't want my eyes to get red and puffy. I, I got to suppress these feelings. Oh my gosh. I got to try to think about something else right now. I have to shift my focus right now. Yeah, it hurts, but I'm suppressing this. I, I can't let this right. I can't let it out right now. 
So sometimes we do that. And I'm not going to say that that's totally unhealthy. Um, suppressing, like I said, is more of a conscious level of doing it. And it's like, I'm, I got to pause this. I'm going to come back to it, hopefully. But sometimes our suppression could turn into a repression. You know, we never come back to it. And um, then, you know, like I said, what goes down must come up eventually. All right. So um, sometimes we will suppress because we gotta, we're got we helping someone. Or you know what? This was bad timing for this crisis that I'm going through, or this situation that I'm going through right now. But I have to take care of this and then I'll come back to it. So then, yeah, we might suppress something momentarily. But the ideal is to come back to it. You know, don't just completely abandon it forever. We got to come back to that. All right. Because it's still in there. <laughs> It's in there, okay? So you want to come back to it, you guys. I have so many notes here. So, you know, we're going to be basically um, learning how to um, release them. We need to learn how to release these emotions. And like I said, we're going to feel it and let it flow through us. So, of course, that's going to require us to develop more um, self-awareness. So, yeah, we need to tune into our bodies and make that a beautiful thing. You got one. You only get one body. You need to love it. You need to embrace it. You need to nurture it. You need to get in tune with it. All right? Because it's constantly communicating with you if you are allowing yourself to be receptive to hear it. Right? And then you're allowing for that flow without being judgmental. Like, oh, I shouldn't feel like this. And, and you're allowed to just be. You're allowed to just be, okay? So there's all different kinds of techniques um, that a person could use to become better at, you know, um, not repressing these emotions, to get out of the habit of doing that and then dealing with the emotions that have already been repressed. So there's something called the Sedona method, okay? Now, um, this this is all about simplicity. Um, a guy wrote a book about this, and um, that author's name is Lester Levinson, Levinson. Okay, so if you just Google the Sedona method, um, you'll find that book. All right, um, and his whole idea is misery is complexity, happiness is simplicity. So he's like, we keep it as simple as possible, and usually, you know, the most simple things are going to help us get that release. Um, I had a printout. I'm trying to find the printout. The printout had, is this it here in the back? Yes, it is. Oh, I've just, I stapled it to the back. <laughs> and it had like some of, hold on a second here. It has um, some of the questions that he would ask for the Sedona method. And some of these questions would be things like, could I welcome what I'm feeling? Could I let this feeling go? Would I let this feeling go? And when? All right. And then um, other questions would be, mastering, hold on a second, you guys. All right, so the next part of the Sedona method would be um, asking questions or basically trying to figure out what you want to try to establish of getting control over your emotions. Are you wanting control? Are you wanting approval? Are you wanting security or safety? Um, wanting separation and oneness. So basically, um, these are reasons why a lot of people are, or what he's suggesting that people are suppressing their emotions. So using your emotional maturity to help you get to a place of being able to let go. And are you suppressing because you're wanting control? You're wanting approval. You're feeling that it's giving you safety or security. You're wanting separation and oneness, which is kind of like an oxymoron. I want separation from the emotions, but I want oneness maybe with something external. It could be something like that. All right. 
But, you know, um, this video isn't going to be in-depth about any of these methods. It's just a general overview. And perhaps I'll consider doing more specific videos on each of these uh, methods, okay? But, yeah, the Sedona method is one of them. And it's just using very simple um, questions to help you discharge the negativity, basically, um, and helping you get to that let go. So then there's something called release techniques. And this is where we're using positive thinking um, as a momentum. All right. And that's like, you know, I shouldn't be able to think this way. I'm allowed to get angry. You are allowed to get angry because you are. So, you know, it's using these positive thinking as such. All right. So release techniques. That's one technique. All right. The other one um, that I have on here, and is this the last one that I have for the technique? Mm -hmm. And this one is called emotional freedom techniques. All right. Um, and this is when you may use stuff like acupuncture, energy medicine, um, something called NLP or neuro linguistic programming. And I really like that one. I really like NLP. And that is um, when you study successful individuals like this person was able to overcome it. How did they do it? And maybe I can learn from them and incorporate that in my life. It's really that simple. So that is the NLP approach here. That is really great. So um, with me mentioning this, you guys, one shoe doesn't, one size doesn't fit all. Um, you can take what you can from any of these methods. You can mix and match, if you will. You can just do one specific method, but you can just see what works for you, you know. And if you're having issues with that, you guys, I am a life coach and um, you can um, get yourself a session with me and we can roll up our sleeves and we can certainly get to the bottom of that. You can have your breakthrough moment. You can have your shift. You can grow through this. You definitely don't have to take it into uh 2020 okay yeah so with that saying you guys i really hope that um you know this has really helped someone in us beginning talking about repressing emotions and seeing how toxic that is for us and you know giving you at least you know somewhere to begin um to get that help all right all right but um like i said you don't have to go with something like this alone you can hire a professional to help you work through these things all right with that being said, you guys, if you appreciate this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Um, that is definitely a great way to support a channel like this, hitting the like button, leaving comments, sharing these videos because they don't teach emotional maturity in school. And I don't know any human being that has never repressed an emotion. You know, it's a part of the human experience, but we can learn to intercept ourselves and, you know, minimize um, the toxic aspects that we can have as human beings. All right. All right, you guys, um, with that being said, you can always check the, descri the description down below for everything that I have going on. And like I said, if you wanted that one-on-one -on -one coaching, visit my website, LakiaCrawford.com to schedule your appointment. All right. And with that being said, never give up on yourself. Life is so beautiful. Okay. Yes, it's not perfect. Yes, it has ups and downs. Yes, you can experience things. It doesn't have to keep you down forever. You can certainly find your healing. All right. So never give up on yourself. You're not being waken up every day for nothing. All right. Never give up on yourself. Continue to do the work. And until next time, please take care. Thank you.